Hey, what's going on guys? My name is John Waldman. I'm a filmmaker based in New York. And today I'm gonna to talk about the Easy Rig Mini Max with the Sony FX6. Let's get into it. Okay, so first off, why did I buy the Easy Rig? So with any cinema camera, you're gonna get it, you're gonna build it out, add accessories to it, it's gonna get heavy. So to combat that and to save your back, this is where the Easy Rig comes in. The Easy Rig is my favorite piece of support for the Sony FX6. It lives on my camera if I'm shooting handheld. I probably rented it out at least 10 times previously, and that's anywhere between 50 and 100 bucks, and that adds up quick. And after a while, you're like, I should be putting this money into my pocket, or it's like, wow, I've already spent a third of what it costs to buy the thing. So if you're renting something out a lot and you're getting a rental budget for it, someone's paying for it, sometimes as a business owner, you gotta make those decisions. Like, oh, you know what? Maybe I should buy this and put that money into my pocket. All right, so before tax, this thing costs a little under 1300 bucks. I think it is worth every penny. First and foremost, you are saving your back, which at the end of the day, health is more important than anything. Two, you're adding this awesome piece of stabilization and support to your kit. 1300 bucks is a lot of money, but if you're in my shoes and you keep renting it out, you may as well do it. All right, so first let's talk about the pros. Right off the bat, if you are shooting all day with a bigger camera setup, you are just gonna wanna have that extra support. Think about your longevity. This career is a grind. You have to be in decent physical shape. Another thing I love about it is the look that you're able to get from the Easy Rig. It gives a very nice, clean, handheld look. It's still steady. It kind of helps even out those micro jitters. And you know, when you're using it, it, it basically makes the camera weightless. You'll see the biggest difference when you're shooting on a long lens. I've used the FX6 with the Easy Rig, let's say on a 70 to 200 for a documentary or commercial kind of shoot. And I'm able to rock that all day long. It takes away all those jitters, especially if some of these newer Sony lenses have optical steady shot. So that in combination with the easy rig, you're able to snipe, you know, long lens shots, which is really awesome. Aesthetically, it looks dope. I don't care what anyone says, oh, gear doesn't matter, yada, yada, yada. Bullshit. It does. I've had so many times where I'm on set working with clients, they're like, whoa, look, what is this thing? I usually get a, either a Ghostbusters joke or a fisherman joke, but when they see that, they're like, oh, oh my God, there is some sort of client perception when it comes to that. Obviously, besides it actually being a very useful tool, I think client perception is important because when you're showing up with, you know, a nice big rig, you have a whole crew with you, you're able to charge more money and they understand where their money is going towards. So gear does matter. Another reason I love this with the FX6, the Mini Max in particular, just with the accessories that I use, it seems to be a perfect fit. I think the Mini Max does up to 15, 14 or 15 pounds. I haven't weighed my rig yet, but it's within that weight limit. It's perfect. I'm sure one day I'll get a bigger camera, just start using bigger cameras, bigger setups, heavier lenses. And then maybe I'd look into something like a, a Vario 5 or whatever other easy rigs there are. But for now, this works for me. The FX6 side handle articulates, and that's really clutch. So let's say I wanna you know, bring the camera up and do a high angle shot looking down. I could just you know, twist that arm handle or vice versa going down, twist it the other way. Anyways, the articulating side handle and the ability to kind of bring the camera up and down really makes it a nice match. And yeah, so the FX6 out of the box, it has really nice ergonomics. I feel like it's a well-balanced camera. So that just makes it easier to get a nice balance on the Easy Rig. It came with this awesome case, very nice suitcase, easy throw it right in your trunk. I love this. There's a ton of pros. It's my favorite piece of stabilization. Now let's talk about the cons. Here's kind of one right off the bat is this is not really made for walking. The way it kind of works, if you walk with the rig, you'll kind of get this like little bouncy judder sort of effect. It's really not for that. It's kind of just strictly for handheld. I will say though, recently I had a little mini doc project kind of shoot where the director wanted me to walk with the easy rig. I was telling him like, ah, oh, like it's not really for walking. He's like, oh, it's all good. Like warp stabilizing post. I'm like, okay. But what I did was I really focused on my walk heel to toe. 
and to combat those kind of like, you know, up and down movements, I was just kind of putting a little more weight on top of the camera to make sure to like kind of minimize the bouncing effect. Um, anyways, actually pretty happy with these results. I was being very cognizant of the way I was walking, the way I was holding the camera. So maybe if you really pay attention to your form, you can walk with the camera, but this is that is not what it is initially intended for. If you want those walking tracking shots, go with a gimbal or a steady cam. Next would I'd say be the low stock. I know this product is from Sweden, but I had a really hard time getting one. I'm a frequent B&H shopper and it was kind of always out of stock. I knew I was just gonna use it a ton this fall. So I was like, I gotta buy it. I ended up having to buy it on Able Cine because they did have it in stock, but it was more expensive. I think I paid like an extra hundred bucks, closer to 1400 than 1300, uh, just because I really wanted to get my hands on it. So it's not the most readily available product. If you are interested in one and you see it in stock, go grab it. Next up, I wanna talk about rigging and my experiences with it. I'm not doing anything too crazy with my rigging. Obviously, you know, there's gonna be a lens and my camera, I have a top plate, a V-mount plate, V-mount battery, a monitor. But you know, some shoots I'm um, working with, you know, bigger, heavier lenses or, you know, Atomos recorders and, you know, getting, you know, uh, sound packs from the audio op. So as the camera grows, you gotta make sure you're kind of keeping things balanced as I was talking about before. So you're definitely gonna wanna have some sort of base plate or rod system. So when you, you know, get the easy rig, you're gonna clamp it and, you know, you'll first see like as it working one way or the other and then so you kind of just readjust the little clamping point but sometimes it goes one side a little too much depending on how you have it built out you want the camera to be perfectly balanced you don't want to have to overcompensate the idea is to do as little work as possible and so i just kind of got brainstormed like how can i combat this issue so got a little fired up went on bnh thought i'm like is there counterweights can i put something on my rods anyways i had never saw anyone do this i'm sure plenty of people do this but it was new to me but I got these rod clamps and I got counterweights. Uh, these are super dope. So basically what I do is I start rigging up the FX6. I see what are the imbalances. Sometimes, you know, if I have a mic on the one side or like the audio pack, it begins to, you know, lean a little bit one way. So you just start in, and get these cooking, and then you just put these right on your rods. I got a bunch of different sizes. And what's really nice is they all have little quarter 20 mounting points. Just screw these together. Yeah, these are super cheap. So yeah, small rig counterweights and then this is a small rig rod clamp. Get a few counterweights, different sizes. Yeah, and what's nice is these guys have a few different mounting points so you could counterbalance as needed. And I've found this has been a really great solution for me. Now I feel like regardless of what I put on my camera, I'm able to counterbalance and always get a nice, clean, even balance. You personally want to do as little work as possible. And what I like with the FX6, it has like that like little uh, camera leveler and that's usually what I use. I'm like, oh, the camera's dipping a little too far to the right. So let me put a little more weight on the left. I think this is also a necessary addition to the kit if you're going to use the Easy Rig with your FX6. The Easy Rig really is a tried and true piece of gear, an awesome piece of stabilization. You can really throw it in anything and that's why I think it's so valuable. And it's really been a welcome addition to my kit. Probably one of my favorite things I've picked up this year. I'd used it so many times before owning it. I'm like, ah, you know what, it's time that I get one. Anyways guys, that's about it for today. I know it's been a long time. Every time I'm like, oh, I'm back from my hiatus. It's always a hiatus. I get busy with work. 2023, uh, well, no, I'm not gonna make a promise. I would love to get more videos out here. Um, anyways, let me know what you think about this. If you want more content surrounding the Sony FX6, business stuff, tutorials, whatever, um, just help me get some ideas. Honestly, the hardest part is just setting everything up. But now I like this setup. As you can see, I got a new apartment. I'm in a new space. But yeah, in short, I love the Easy Rig. It is a great match with the Sony FX6. It's awesome, saves your back, shoot handheld all day, throw a long lens on there, you're golden, no crazy shakes, smoother handheld footage. It's just a really nice aesthetic if you're into handheld like myself. Um, anyways, guys, yeah, so that's about it for today. Um, I know it's been a while. Um, I hope to see you guys again soon. <laughs> Cheers, homies. Peace.